10 times Meghan Markle pissed off the royal family part 2. Kate Middleton, an English TV personality, says the Duchess of Cambridge became increasingly frustrated with Meghan's attitude towards her privileged position and feels she ruined her relationship with her brother-in-law Harry. Kate wasn't too amused by the way Meghan was behaving, Lizzie explains. You never see Kate whining and moaning, and she had a fair bit of bad press herself, but you don't see Kate going on TV. Kate does it the right way. Meghan should have taken a leaf out of Kate's book, according to Lizzie. Kate also blames Meghan for ruining her once close relationship with Harry. Before Meghan came on scene, Harry, William, and Kate were so close. Now Harry seems to be a different guy. It seems Meghan has alienated him from his friends and family, Lizzie added. That, just like the late queen, Kate's biggest fear is that Meghan will sell out the monarch for millions, which I mean, she's kind of doing. The queen is worried Meghan will go nuclear. She's worried she will go to the Oprah Winfrey talk show and spill all the beans on the royal family, says Lizzie. If you can't tell, Lizzie's saying a lot here. I mean, look, already her friends have gone and said the royal family is toxic. I think the late queen had to take a firm reins and let them have their way. Let them go because she needs to take control. Lizzie also claims Meghan's ultimate goal is to turn herself and Harry into global stars like the Beckhams. And she won't let anyone, not even the royal family, stand in her way. Don't forget. I met Megan a few years ago, not me, Lizzie, and Victoria Beckham was there, and Megan was squealing with excitement that Victoria was in the same building as her. Well, Prince William. I mean, we talked about Kate, so on the other hand, shout out Randy Travis, amazing song. Meghan Markle isn't too fond of her brother-in-law, Prince William. The former Suits actress reveals in her Netflix docuseries, which I hope everyone's watched by now, that she is annoyed at the Prince of Wales for allegedly colluding against her associate newspaper lawsuit. Markle's lawyer, Jenny Afia, recounts in episode six of Harry and Meghan, which began streaming not too long ago, that the judge presiding over the Duchess of Sussex's legal case ruled in her favor in 2021. I think she barely won any money though. The newspaper appealed, Afia says, when we were just about to go to court of appeal, a senior member of William's team came forward to give his witness statement, which wasn't required. And sadly, there's just no way he could have done that without the authority of his bosses. If he is referring to Jason Knopf, a former communication secretary for William, and his wife, Kay Milton, as well as Harry and Markle. Knopf is also the staffer who reportedly made a complaint against Markle to HR in 2018. Oh my God, gossip. Claiming she was bullying other staff members, which she denied. Knopf then became a CEO of William and Middleton's Royal Foundation, a post he left earlier this year. He is now a board member of the Earthshot Prize, which William founded. Harry also claims William lost his temper during a family meeting held after he and Markle announced they were quitting the Royal Family January 2020. It was terrifying to have my brother scream and shout at me, I want to scream and shout, and my father say things that were just simply not true. And my grandmother, the late queen, quietly sat there and just took it all in. You remember. Staff backlash. This is obviously going to be a corresponding point to the last one, um, but a source did tell the British paper that palace insiders were seething with rage at allegations made in the docuseries. The trailer was also slammed by online trolls who called the series hypocritical. In a conversation with Sky News Australia, Paul Murray, Megan Kelly mentioned her perspective on the bullying allegations and how they were coming out from an abandonment of her friends and family. Her wedding peppered only by celebrities and no one who actually knew or loved her. They lost 17 staffers, top staffers in the past few years. That's not normal to lose 14, especially at the level when you are royal. People probably really want to work for you. One internet user voiced their opinion on the trailer by saying, I love the part where Harry and Meghan write a letter by making it clear that the monarchy is a horrible, oppressive system. This caused outrage for former employees to voice their frustration with NDAs that limit them from saying anything about the lies in the Netflix docuseries. One of them, palace staffers, says, she knows we can't financially protect ourselves by going to court, so she keeps pushing. It's all a game for her, and she loves it. They said, I certainly have chose to remain silent out of respect for the crown, but if they keep attacking us and our characteristics and our reputation, etc., we need to feel we are equally supported by the royal family. I agree. 
I, I concur. I concur. Hypocrisy. Yeah, again, leeway from last point. Senior Royals are not publicly reacting to the series and are said to be getting on with their duties, as they should. Harry has also faced claims of hypocrisy after he used the show to slam Meghan's father, Thomas Markle, for doing deals with photographers. The shameless prince told Netflix, it's amazing what people will do when offered a huge amount of money. Hmm, kind of like make a docu-series. He and Megan, honestly, I slammed the docu-series. I watched it. It's not bad. It kind of just gives a good insight to uh, to kind of their lives and what they went through. It's just a story of theirs. Whether it's lies or not, it was entertaining. So he and Megan are said to have been paid 80 million to spill their guts on the show. Um, kind of hypocritical to say that about Thomas, but we'll continue. The couple also have previous form for struggling to tell the whole truth after at least 17 mistakes in their Oprah Winfrey interview last year. Megan even had to apologize to the high court after forgetting she had briefed the authors of finding freedom despite denying the claims for years. Yesterday, their spokeswoman raised eyebrows by claiming Megxit was never about privacy. Ashley Hansen told the New York Times their statement announcing their decision to step back mentions nothing about privacy and reiterates their desire to continue their roles and public duties. Any suggestions otherwise speaks to a key point of this series. They are choosing to share their story on their terms, and yet the tabloid's media has created an entirely untrue narrative that permits press coverage and public opinion. The facts are right in front of them. Sources close to William and Kate say they are shocked that the Sussexes are painting a picture of a couple abandoned by the royal family when so much was done to make them happy. But Harry will continue whining. There is a hierarchy of the family, he will say. Everything that has happened to us always was gonna happen to us. Megan will also describe the period after her wedding and say suddenly what clocked in my head was it's never gonna stop. And Harry will tell why they quit royal life and headed to the US saying, there was no other option at this point. We need to get out of here. Netflix claims the royal family were approached for comment, but this is heavily disputed. And honestly, if I was the royal family, I'd just leave it to them. Just leave it to them, release the doc. What does it affect me? I'm running charities. You know what I mean? Curtsy, Meghan Markle has been slammed online for mocking having to curtsy to the late queen in the Sussexes controversial Netflix show. The Duchess was discussing how unusual she found it to have to curtsy to the late queen, saying it was like medieval times. In episode two of the new doc, she bowed low and demonstrated her very first curtsy to the beloved former monarch before straightening back up with a small giggle. Online commentators, AKA Twitter, was not too happy. One critic tweeted, Meghan Markle mocking the monarch with the supposed curtsy, how utterly disrespectful of the British people and their traditions. Another seeth, Meghan Markle mocks the respect of the curtsy for our beloved queen, mocks the traditions of the monarchy in the UK and finds herself adorable while doing it. However, others defended Meghan and said it was hilarious, which honestly kind of was funny. The curtsy part was funny to me. Watching Meghan do a deep bow in Harry's face, let's all live, laugh, love, like a floor mat in every Karen's house. Spilled tea, yes. Megan was accused of abrasive behavior towards staff members and diplomats. According to an explosive royal biography that has been released, looking back at the Sussex's visit to Sydney, Australia, where they received an amazing reception, Bauer writes, Megan was allegedly abrasive towards her four female staff and even towards local British diplomats. According to one report, Megan allegedly whipped a cup of tea into the air. Her anger may have been partly fueled by Harry. Every night he trawled social media searching for snide comments on the internet. Or every morning he and Megan turned on their phones and surfed the internet. And well, I think that's a bit of your own doing. If you're that big in the spotlight, people are gonna hate on you. Just look at my comments. Australia as covered in the past videos, it just, it didn't seem too fun for them. It seemed like a big headache. And uh, I think throwing tea, Megan, while being in the British royal family is a big, big no-no. Yeah, maybe don't do that. Um, it sounds as if they were down under in the down under. Please comment LOL down below for that terrible joke and to boost my self esteem. All right, TR Tantrum. We've talked about this. In November 2018, just days after the couple returned from their successful tour down under, <laughs> wasn't successful, the Times reported that Megan had thrown a tiara tantrum shortly before her wedding because the tiara she wanted to wear was not available, said Andrew Morton, royal biographer, in his new book. It was revealed 
in the same book that Harry spoke to the Queen about the tiara, asking if Meghan could get the one she truly wanted. Rather than giving in to Harry's request, the one Meghan wanted, Morton adds, the late Queen replied, she gets what tiara she's given by me. I mean, that's fair. If the Queen was giving me a tiara, I don't think I'd complain. Unfortunately, God rest her soul, she passed away and she won't give me a tiara anytime soon. Additionally, in Meghan's interview with Oprah Winfrey, she recalled that Kate made her cry and added that she had forgave her sister-in-law and sent flowers. But according to palace staff, who have since accused Meghan of bullying, the scenario played out the other way around with Kate leaving in tears. Sounds like a bunch of he said, she said, she said, he said, and I'll put an end to it right now. I say, where was my invite to the wedding? Cause I want to go, Meghan. I think that the TR looked nice and I would have loved to be there hanging out with you, but it's okay, it's okay. Laughing at Mass, One Direction singer Liam Payne, what a character that guy is, he was on stage singing, Waiting on the World to Change, great song. Waiting on the World to Change, is that from uh, Curious George? One of John Mayer's hit songs, when the camera moves to Megan and Harry, who shared a smirk to which Megan broke out laughing. I mean, come on, have you ever been in a situation where you aren't meant to laugh and you look at someone and then you just can't hold it in? Like everyone's been there, so let's just uh, kind of agree to just forget about this one and we'll just, just let it play out. The Queen's health. The Queen's health was raised as a point of concern by Jeremy Cowell while he slammed Meghan Markle for timing her announcement to be as embarrassing as possible for the royal family. A direct quote from Jeremy Kyle on Piers Morgan, who's a huge fan of Meghan Markle, TV show, let me know your thoughts on his accusation. He argued, I'll say it again, if you don't want to be in the royal family because you don't want press and exposure and you don't like every facet of your life being interrogated, you go to California with the love of your life and you have two children. You don't land and sign a deal with Spotify and this is the bit that really gets on my bits, if I'm being completely honest. Every single time there's something that matters to the royal family like this, the passing of Prince Philip, Today is the 25th anniversary of Princess Diana. What does Meghan Markle do? Drop her latest truth bomb. So thank you for watching.